Heart to Breeding Week that we're co covering this week, Zerlina Pratt, who's the dairy lecturer in Chagaskin Kildalton, is going to talk about selectivity and how she's been using it in the last number of years in the herd in Kildalton to Im improve breeding in the dairy herd and also improve the quality of the beef stock that they're generating. And actually, it's just uh, by, by chance that a report came out from ICBF yesterday that uh, they're setting a new benchmark target for dairy beef calves of 200 day weight. And they found that the better quality genetic calves are 10, day, 10 kilos heavier than their cohorts, we'll say, uh, on the basis of the scheme that was in place with the department last year for weighing of dairy beef. So better genetics is resulting in better, heavier carcasses at earlier ages. And obviously, Zerlina will be able to comment on this because they've been doing this for a while at, at Kildalton and they've been following through on their stock. These stock are grading better and they're also killing out maybe at younger ages, which is an important piece from a carbon efficiency point of view. But I suppose initially from a dairy point of view, obviously, we're going to look at how Zerlina is kind of picking her cows in terms of um, the ones that she is going to breed for to have replacements for the college herd. And then uh, the beef choices after that, then uh, subsequently. So Zerlina has a few slides that we're going to, she's just going to show there. And then we'll have, a, a, I suppose, a bit of a chat as we go along and by all means, put in questions as we go. So thanks, Zerlina, for joining us. Thanks, Stuart. Uh, I'll just share my screen. OK, I suppose I'll just um, take you through this, but where we where we started, I came into the, the dairy unit, I suppose, in 2019. Um, James Ryan would have been there before me. So when I came in, it was all dairy AI up until then. Um, and we have a lot of Jersey crossbreds in the herd as well. We would have crossed a lot of Jersey in the last couple of years. So we were just looking at the effect of kind of that Jersey crossbred bull calf and, you know, finding a, a kind of a saleable home for them. Um, I decided to go down the route of trying some beef AI in the herd. So I started that in 2020. Um, and I suppose, look, it was just to try and number one is to try and add value to that kind of Jersey crossbred, you know, bull calf. Um, we obviously have a lot of students coming through the college here every year. And we wanted to look at that sustainability aspect as well with, with calves coming through. Um, and you'd hear all the stories of, of calves and no value to calves and especially that type of calf as well. So it was just to demonstrate to students as well the option of maybe using a little bit of beef AI not saying converting to, to you know, the majority of cows going to beef AI, but certainly a few of them. And on certain cows, and we'd highlight that to students as well, like this, not every cow gets a beef straw here in the college. And there's, a there's a reason for that. Um, we also uh, decided to kind of pull out the later born replacement heifer calves and have, you know, cal calves that are coming on stream from kind of March onwards, that they'd all be beef calves. I suppose, look, for us here, it, it works for us because there's a beef unit on the farm as well. So we've we have the beef unit here um, that take a lot of our beef calves. So students will see them born on the dairy unit as a crossbred beef calf, and then they travel through to finishing. So um, they'd certainly, feedback from them is very good that they're happy with the, the beef cross calves that are coming through to them and the finishing weights and things of those. Now I don't actually have the figures in them, but I can certainly get them um, afterwards. But it kind of, it just, it works for us. It probably, Look, it's not going to work for every every single farm right there, but certainly for us, because we have the beef unit on the farm, we are finishing a lot of those animals ourselves. Um, so it kind of suits us. Um, what I do when it comes to this time of year, certainly about a month or two ago, there's two kind of protocols that we have in the dairy unit. Number one is I want to select out the highest EBI cows for dairy AI, and that's obviously to improve EBI. So at the moment, our herds at an EBI of 197 euros. And look, we're always trying to improve that every single year. Um, but we don't breed all the cows to, to dairy AI from the, the get-go. We actually breed some of our cows to beef AI from the get-go because they're lower EBI. Uh, I don't really want replacements from those cows either. So, and because we have the beef unit, um, they're going to finish a lot of our cows as well. So last year, for example, we had 63 cows that were used for a surf, first kind of first serve um, there were a couple of them that came to a second serve that we served to a dairy AI straw. So top EBI bulls um, across the board. And we had 26 heifers that we used as well for dairy AI in the first and second serve. So those 26 heifers, 24 of them went in calf to dairy AI. And on the third serve, I actually put them, anything that repeated, I put the last two that, that came back on that third serve, I actually put them to beef. I put them to an Angus bull because I didn't want heifers 
potentially heifers born that late in the season. So I cancelled that out by by breeding them to beef. Some people probably um, say that's madness, but uh, it's just the, the system that I went with last year. So of those 63 cows and 26 heifers, uh, we have 33 replacement heifers on the ground uh, born this year. So like we're, we're happy with that. We selected out those 63 cows to the highest EBI cows um, that we had in the herd. So we just said, you know, out of those plus the heifers, we get our reserve of about 30 calves. That's what we were looking for and to be able to select out of. So we achieved that this year um, and we were kind of, we were happy enough with it. So we'll do something slightly similar this year. The only thing we're doing different is those heifers that we have served this year are actually going to use sex semen on those for the first time. Um, and we'll probably have a lower number of cows then that would be served dairy AI this year. So for example, those cows that we have this year going to dairy AI, they're probably of an EBI of about, I think I checked them last time, it's about 215 upwards. Um, and anything lower than that, then we'll get beef from the from the start. The second thing then is all our, our low EBI cows. So last year we had about 54 cows that went from the very start. So we start breeding here with those beef, um, those beef AI straws from about the the 9th of April. It depends if they're kind of a longer gestation bull, they might be a little bit earlier. Our main season kind of starts on the 19th of April, which is quite early, but we're an early kind of system here. But we selected out those 54 cows from the very start that they get beef AI. Um, and the majority of those are reared on the beef unit. And they could be, we we have a kind of different breeds. We have uh, Belgian Blues, uh, Limousins, Angus. Uh, we tried Albrecht this year as well for the first time. Um, so there's kind of, and that's really a student aspect as well, showing different breeds and, and how they kind of get on uh, through the, through the season like and, and up to finishing so just to I suppose sh sh show you what what we're getting on the ground um, on the left there is, is a little uh, Belgian blue that we had out of we only actually really use one um, Belgian blue just because it's an easier calving we wouldn't we wouldn't put that type of straw on a smaller cow because some of our cows are quite small they are quite jersey cross but we'd leave the the BBs and the, the limousines to bigger cows so that that guy on the left there was probably about um 10 cows got belgian blue um last year and on the right uh is our limousine calf so he would have been out of eby so the other side of it for us as well is we actually breed about 25 of our cows um to eby and that's that's actually that's been brought across in the beef unit they're looking for replacement heifers on their unit so it kind of works for us as well in that sense like it's not just all about finishing they actually take any replacement heifers that are out of EBY, they they want them for the herd as well, for their own for their own suckler herd. So we'd always breed 25 uh, cows at the very start of the season um, to EBY, and then we get our reserve of replacement heifers that go into the suckler herd. So it kind of works out for them as well. Um, and this guy is just out of LM2014. He's he's two days old there. So it's just, and look, we'd have other breeds as well on the farm, but as far as it goes for us, like it's 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 different. Um, and it isn't for everybody, um, but we we feel that we're we're improving our genetic gain. Like our, our EBI was 166 in 2019. We're up at 197. Um, our heifers we're happy with the the dairy heifers that we have, and any of those lower EBI cows are just getting beef from the start. And look, some people might say, oh, you know, you're going to have serious problems with with calf and their bigger, you know, beef bulls. We had one slightly difficult calving this year, um, no C-sections. Um, they seem to be absolutely fine, Like, but I guess that's kind of on selection of the, the type of bull that you're using as well. And we'd be conscious of gestation period as well on the on the cows that are going to beef as well. So do, do the limousines with the EBI, I'm not actually familiar with the figures in terms of gestation, length, but generally limousines tend to carry a bit of time. So are they the ones that you're using a little bit earlier so? Yeah, like even EBY, to be fair to him, a very, very popular bull. Um, he doesn't actually have um, too much of an extension to his gestation. That's probably why he's so he's so popular on the dairy side. Um, but I would always ask the beef unit here um, in about January, February time, look, what do you want uh, for your replacements this year? And they came back to us this year and said another 20, 25 cows put in calf to get their reserves of replacements. So that's, that's coming from their side. They want EBY. He's proven the last couple of years, never had a problem. Uh, calving that that bull and gestation isn't isn't overly um extended and the same with the same with lm2014 but yeah we're very very critical on that too because the limousines do tend to kind of carry 
a bit further. But they're the only two limousines we would have used this year, okay. kind of on that on that criteria. A very circular economy operating in Kildalton, so yeah, exactly. <laughs> and I suppose the benefit for the the the, the circular herd obviously is that they have very early calves again. They are like, yeah, exactly. Like, look, it's um, we start breeding those EBY calves just because the suckler unit actually here is is very early is very early breeding and calving so we kind of have to match them at the same time to get those replacements you know fit for breeding yeah. so we do we do tend to breed those those EBY calves from about the 9th of of April so we'll start them fairly soon uh, just and we'll only do that for the first um just until we get that first 25 cows bred um to EBY and then we'll stop it then after that so they won't be they won't be cows that will keep breeding limousine on into June you know, we, we kind of cut it off because uh, otherwise, like last year, we stopped, we finished up Calvin on the 28th of March. So it's just to keep it as compact for us as well, you yeah. know, not have them strain on into, into April and that kind of thing as well. So like you said there, that you start, um, you're starting to breed now, maybe now on the 9th of April, we we'll say if, like you're just a couple of weeks ahead of everyone else, I suppose. So, but you're still doing it. You're, you're calving that bit earlier, but you're also finished earlier. So that you're starting your AI and you're doing everything in your blocks all the time. Exactly. Um, just on the figures there, Zerlina, like we'll say in terms of the EBI that you're talking about for the, the cows that you're going to breed this year, a 215 of an average EBI there for, uh, as in, as in your cutoff point, you're like, uh, what, 60, you're 75 euros ahead of the national average uh, EBI there. That's a really, really high cutoff point from your perspective. Would you, would you, if you weren't feeding the beef unit and the suckler unit there, would you consider breeding more of the stock? We'll say because you have such a high genetic merit potential within the herd as potential saleable replacements, or or what's your thinking on it? Yeah, I, I, I think I would. I mean, look, we're we're sli- we are slightly different here because it's an education centre and objectives are slightly different. But if it was me. And I had an EB, you know, an EBI of 197 at home, and I cows at that high an EBI, I probably would be breeding more of those cows um, to AI or to, to dairy AI because um, look, there is there is a big market out there, um, and it is a very high EBI as well. So we probably would have a slightly different agenda if it was if it was me at home now doing it. Um, I probably would breed more of the dairy um, to to those those kind of cows. And again, I suppose, like in the conversations that we were having earlier, like it, it, a kind of a controversial question to ask you, but is it nearly a waste of some of the dairy genetics within the in the country of Ireland? We'll say that you are breeding some of these to beef, like, and will you change? Would we'll say I know this is your first year now with the sixth semen. We'll say, but is there if it goes well, is there an, a, an opportunity maybe to? run some sort of a replacement sale enterprise out of it as well or is it something that you're not going to look at at all or what's your thinking on it yeah i think so we um we would have previously when we were all dairy ai before we would have previously sold kind of uh bull and heifers um and look we've worked hard in the last couple of years to to keep that ebi going up and it's it's probably it's like it is a good story to tell but um, it, it might be an option for this year. We might pull back a little bit on on how critical we are with the cows and actually breed a little bit more and have you know a couple of a couple of calves um, that we could sell as a surplus. Uh, and even even talking to some of the the dairy specialists, they did say that said, look, you know, if if you were thinking of breeding a few more of those high EBI cows, like there is a market there for them. Um, I suppose it was just it's just where it suits our system, but. It's it's an option. It's even an option for this year is to breed a few more of those cows, um, and sell those as surplus heifer cows because they probably are going to be like very high EBI for, for you know you know for other farms as well. Yeah. And just um, then in terms of the the selection of the bulls for the beef unit, we'll say, um, are the lads dictating what you what you're going to use? Or I know they've obviously said that they want more DBYs and so forth, but when for the for the beef unit itself, we'll say for the dairy beef stock, are you is, have you sole control over what you're picking there or the, the lads? Yeah, um, to be fair to to be fair to, uh, to the lads on the beef unit, uh, other than EBY, they kind of give me free reign to to do what I want. So I I'm looking at a well, calving difficulty is is a big one for us because they're just they're a different sort of cow that kind of jersey cross, um, for a lot of them. And uh, then it's just like we tried Aubrac this year as well. Um, friend of kind of soft enough kind of calves. Um, but that was just on a on a student 
kind of initiative, you know, to, to be showing them different bull cows that are beef cows that can come off those cows um, and Angus's as well. Like we always get on really well with the Angus's as well. So it's kind of up to it's up to me, really, what I select like. And I, I would look at the DBI um, to kind of pick out some of those bulls, you know, as, but then there's obviously preference for ourselves. If a bull has done well the year before, we'll probably use him again. Like, you know, and we've had we've had really good success with them. Um, one or two of the Angus's over the years and it hasn't really changed. Like it's still still killing out quite well and that. So we're, we're happy enough like with them. You know? Yeah, and in terms of I suppose the the big challenge that we would have Zerlina at a commercial level is probably people wanting to or we'll say they'll use beef, but they're just pushing in terms of you mentioned the DBI there. They're tending to go towards the calving ease piece, and they're forgetting about the beef the beef element of it. Now that's a key focus for you because you're feeding into your beef unit. But we'll say like higher carcass weights from bulls that you're using, uh, beef bulls, beef AI bulls that you're using aren't causing you problems in terms of calving difficulty. So by using the, the index that's there, you're, you're able to get a, an easy calving on time, relatively speaking, depending on the breed, obviously. And these are maturing into fine beef stock then on the beef unit. Yeah, um, like we, I've, I found that, Look, we I think every dairy farmer has this focus on you know keeping gestation nice and short and calving difficulty that, but like that's why we look at the DBI because it's grand and saying you know and I, I've seen a couple of breeds over the years and a couple of bulls in particular and they might they might calve really easily and the cow nearly sneezes them out and they're short gestation, but sure what what use is that when you know the the beef enterprise manager comes racing up the stairs to me and says you know that bull turned out to be an absolute disaster for carcass weight. And that's so we, we have to look at that. Like we have to make sure that although our parameters on the dairy unit is, you know, we don't want, we don't want calves on into April and really long gestations. And we don't want, you know, to have to get the side door option with C-sections that we do have to look at the beef element too. And like there is, there is a case there for plenty of bulls out there that are nice, short gestation, easy calving, um, like I said, we only had we only had one tough calving this year, but it still wasn't a C-section. Um, and they're still turning out to be, you know, good on the beef end for for carcass weights and that as well. So it can be done, like, you know, with um with that kind of a system and and kind of looking through. You do have to study the DBI, like you have to look through it. What do you want out of it? You know, some people have preferences for certain breeds and things, but you know, you do have to look through it with a good um a good look at it. But it can be done, like, you know, with all those parameters from the dairy and the beef side can be met like yeah yeah i suppose that's that's the key point to get across to people is like that you can achieve that calving ease with, and but still have a fine calf and, and then you said it there that you're also picking some of the cows so the belgian blues are only going on to those bigger cows so there's there's that balancing act to be done as well so you've a bull selected that okay they might they're not necessarily hard calving but the the dam that you're going to put them onto you're being conscious of that animal as well that they what's their ability to calve that animal subsequently or that calf subsequently as well just uh, another question then um, in terms of the bull selection piece would we'll say are you using um gene ireland straws and or do you just pick out of the catalogs only or what's the it's just a question that has come in there in terms of, of uh, a kind of a cost control piece around ai this year would we'll say obviously gene ireland would be that bit cheaper rather than buying out of the catalog um what would you what's your thinking in relation to gene ireland are you picking very clearly on your your own merits like up to now um it has been just picking out of the catalog and i will be quite critical like with um with what we're picking and sometimes maybe that's uh it doesn't go down too well but but um yeah up to now it, it we, we haven't actually um done anything with gene ireland or anything but we've just been picking out of the out of the catalog like so far Okay, so I suppose just an answer to the question that's been asked in relation to cost control, I think you could do the, do what's been suggested is to to you pick the catalogs, uh, to, sorry, to pick the high EBI bulls out of the catalog for heifers for two rounds, Gene Ireland bulls on highest EBI cows, and then B for every other serve uh, in terms of cost control. Yeah, look, it's going to work, but in reality, the, I would say that cost control in relation to AI it's only going to be a couple of hundred euro one way or the other. And they're the building blocks of the future. Like in Zerlina can show the progression that they've made in the last couple of years in terms of being really selective in her breeding. I'm not knocking Jean Ireland there now at all. I think that it has a role to play because maybe whether it may not play a role for you, Zerlina, from the point of view that you're 
EBI is so high, it could be, it may not, they just, they, they, depending on what you're trying to improve within the herd, they, not knowing what you're going to get uh, for a, at this stage, because you'll probably nearly be started your EBI or your, your dairy breeding soon, um, may be a bit of an issue for you. But in general, those um, Gene Ireland straws are going to be very high merit and where used appropriately can bring a herd forward as well. And they are obviously cheaper, but at the same time, I think it's a it's a false economy maybe to try saving in terms of of um, breeding uh, too much. It will say being penny wise and pound foolish almost in terms of investment in genetics because those genetics that you land on the ground next year are the genetics that you're going to be milking for the next six, seven years following the calving the, the, the year after. And you need to make sure that they're as good as, as possible. And you also need to make sure that they're appropriate for your herd so uh, you've kind of indicated that there's a lena that from the point of view where you want the herd to go the dairy herd to go that you you like to have the control of what you're going to use in order to generate those replacements um you mentioned that you're going to use six there this year that, so it's only on the heifers i think is it yeah only on only on the heifers uh we had this discussion last friday um the colleges get together and discuss um kind of different topics on on the, each of the college farms so like there was you know there was discussion about look it's our first year ever doing this um hopefully it goes well for us i i hope it does um we're gonna we're gonna just go with the first kind of couple of days of just natural ai and and everybody has their own different plans of you know fixed time ai and that but we'll probably just go with the first couple of days give them an injection um we did do a a cedar protocol just with conventional dairy ai last year just because they're on an out block and it kind of suited us but it just didn't work well at all and um, for whatever reason, uh, it just it just didn't work out. And we always had good results with breeding the cows for the first couple of days and then injecting them before. So we're just going to go back to to that again um, and breed those heifers for one round with sexed semen and then go back to conventional dairy eye for the second second service to come back around um, and see see how it goes for this for us this year. Say. OK, so uh, that's very good. So the, as I said, the like if your criteria set out very early on, you're obviously starting breeding that bit earlier. So you're ahead of the game in that sense. Um, and you're may like, have you just go up to carry those extra replacements on the farm anyway, if you were to generate more of them? Yeah, not, not really, I suppose. Is it? it It's it's probably tight enough. Look, we've we've done it. We've done it up to about August with calves. But really and truly by then we do need to be we need to be selling them on at that stage. We took on another block of ground in 2020 and that was where we moved the heifers up there Um, found that cedar protocol. Just, it just, it just didn't work for us. It happened to go up there and, um, and, and check heifers twice a day. And that we just said this year, we're bringing them back to the main block. So we probably have room for some of those surplus heifers, but we certainly wouldn't want a massive influx of them um, or we get very tight um, yeah, okay. on, so on supply. It's, I suppose that's highlighting it's an important consideration for people as well that mm. if they do have high EBI herds that they are considering this that they'd nearly want to be kind of maybe having the conversations with people to make sure that they have outlets for them uh, in advance of generating the stock rather than generating the stock and then looking for the outlets for them and then maybe being left with them exactly yeah, yeah. so look that, that was great Zerlina thanks very much for coming on and talking to us today and, and the photos actually really paint a nice picture to be fair to you in terms of the, the potential I suppose and I, I think the other thing is the, the fantastic situation there is the fact that you can because you're not using a beef bull you're using very de, de beef AI that you have multiple different breeds coming through and as I said from a college perspective it's a great example of the different performance levels and also being able to follow through those performance levels and uh, for people that were involved in the dairy beef program last year there will be reports available on your ICBF accounts in the next couple of days uh, summarizing kind of your weighing system from last year and how the different calves have performed and I'm sure you'll be all very surprised when you look at it to see how some of the good quality uh, a um, beef bulls that you might think that you have are performing relative to some of the AI bread stock that might be on the farm so just, uh, I suppose, as a bit of housekeeping, we'll be back next week to talk about uh, fertilizer for silage. 
Um, and just to remind people that there's a series of clover walks beginning next Tuesday. Uh, there's going to be two in the two across the country every day on Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday of next week, and then the following week again, covering all 12 regional units. And if people are interested in that, just check out. I'm sure to be advertised on today's journal as well, as well as being advertised on our own website. So I just said, wish you all the best for the coming week. And thanks millions, Zerlina, for coming on and look forward to talking to you again sometime soon. No worries. Thanks, Stuart. Bye, everyone.